Brotherhood of Breath. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, we turn now to a major new piece by Rolling Stone contributing editor Matt Taibbi. It's called the Loot Looting the Pension Funds. Five years after the financial crisis, Wall Street is picking at the carcass of flat broke city and state governments, blaming public workers and making millions to, quote, rescue them. Well, Matt Taibbi joins us here in our studio. Explain how the pension funds are being looted. Well, the, the primary focus of my piece, there were, there were a couple of things. Number one, how, how did these funds come to be broke in the first place? I think everybody realizes that states are in fiscal crises, are having trouble paying out uh, their obligations to workers. Uh, one of the reasons is that states, uh, uh, at least 14 states, have not been making their annual required contributions to the pension fund for years and years and years. So essentially, they've been illegally borrowing from these pension funds, uh, sometimes going back decades. Uh, but another focus of the piece uh, was the, so, the solution that a lot of uh, sort of Wall Street funded think tanks are coming up with now is to put is to get higher returns by putting these funds into alternative investments like hedge funds. Uh, and in a lot of cases, what I'm finding is that the fees that states are paying for these new hedge funds and these new types of alternative investments are actually roughly equal to the cuts that they're taking from workers. Uh, like in the state of Rhode Island, for instance, uh, they've frozen the cost of living adjustment, and the, the, the frozen COLA uh, roughly equals the fees that they're paying uh, to hedge funds in that state. And we're finding, so essentially, it's a, it's a wealth transfer from teachers, cops, and firemen to billionaire hedge funders. Well, you know, decades ago, uh, pension funds used to invest very uh, conservatively, right. uh, basically in bonds, because they knew that this was retirement money of workers that they couldn't risk. Right. But increasingly then, over the last 20, 30 years, they shifted more and more of their money into the stock market, so right. the, to the gambling of the stock market. So when the market went down, then suddenly the investment uh, returns of these pension funds went down, and they, they were stuck then, because they were projecting continued increases in those returns. Turns. Sure. Yeah. No. And and uh, among the problems here is that uh, state and municipal pension funds are uh, actually not covered by ERISA, which is the federal law governing uh, p pensions. Um, so there's no prudent man rule uh, that requires um, a certain level of uh, reasonability or prudence uh, in investment. Uh, hedge funds probably would not have been a typical uh, public or municipal investment a long time ago. Um, but, you know, now they're being used in some cases 10, 15, 20 percent of, the, of these state funds are being put into these alternative investments. And if you look on the prospectuses of a lot of these investments, they say right in the front in huge letters, these are high risk investments. You may lose everything. It's exactly the opposite of what you want to put public money into. Matt Taibbi, talk about John Arnold. So John Arnold is a former Enron uh, energy commodities trader who um, uh, became a billionaire, uh, one of the world's most successful commodity traders after the collapse of Enron. Uh, and he's sort of a, the, the new Koch brothers figure. He's uh, on a crusade. He's created something called the Arnold Foundation, which is funding uh, uh, pension reform efforts in multiple states all across the country, uh, you know, from, from Montana to Kentucky to Florida uh, to Rhode Island, where I spend a lot of time. Uh, in Rhode Island, uh, Arnold donated a lot of money to a, a 501c4 organization called Engage Rhode Island, which uh, helped promote the pension reform policies of the sort of Wall Street friendly treasurer they have in that state. And this is sort of the new formula is you have in the Citizens United age, you have some person, a hedge fund guy like John Ar Arnold, uh, who gives a whole bunch of money to some shadowy organization which advertises this crisis that we can't afford to pay workers anymore, so we have to do things differently. We got to make cuts, and then we got to put all the money in, in Wall Street uh, managed funds. And that's, and that's sort of his playbook. Uh, I'd like to ask you about Detroit, obviously the biggest uh, bankruptcy that we, we know of, of uh, in recent modern times in the United States for a municipality, and you have the situation of the pension funds there mm -hmm. under threat, big front page story in the New York Times today. But the average retiree from Detroit government is receiving a pension of $19,000 a year. Right. Um, we're not talking about golden parachutes here, yet these are the very pension funds that are now under attack. Sure, yeah. There's a huge, uh, you know, corruption case that just that just 
broke open this morning. And, you know, what I would say about that is, you know, what, what did Willie Sutton say about why he robbed banks? That's where the money is. Look, pension funds are sort of the last great big unguarded piles of money in this country. And there are going to be all sorts of operators who are trying to get their hands on that money. During the crisis era, it was Wall Street banks who were, who were essentially looting these funds by selling them toxic, fraudulent mortgage-backed securities. In Detroit, it was the workers themselves who were, who were taking the money. They were giving themselves what they called 13th checks, uh, essentially taking advances out on their own money. But across the country, the more typical narrative is not, you know, some worker who's making $19,000 who's, who's really making out on this kind of corruption. It's, it's a hedge fund who's, who's making 50 and $60 million in fees uh, managing state funds. And that's, that's the much more typical narrative. Matt, you had a piece earlier, 16 major firms may have received early data from Thomson Reuters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, that, uh, that story came out uh, actually earlier this year. Uh, there was a whistleblower who worked at Thomson Reuters. Um, there's a key economic indicator that uh, Thomson Reuters is, is contracted to uh, with the University of Michigan to release. It affects the um, Fed's projections and some of the Fed's moves. Um, if you have early access to that data, uh, you definitely have a trading advantage, and it's subsequently come out that uh, some firms, uh, 16 of the biggest banks and hedge funds in, in the world, uh, have been getting that data up to uh, an hour early. Um, uh, those and names that are going to and that means that they are able to trade ahead of that information. Uh, you know, there's, I, I spoke with a, uh, a market research firm who looked at the trading data, and he said. Uh, look, you're seeing these huge spikes in activity just before the, the data is official, officially released, which means that there are a whole bunch of people who have a lot of money who are, who are gambling on inside information. And this is, this is going on all over the place. Matt Toivy, we're going to have to leave it there. Contributing editor for Rolling Stone magazine. We'll